Hello. In this session, we are going to look at the AWS global uh, infrastructure. Now, in the last session, we looked at how you can sign up to the account, how you can create an account on AWS. Now, that is very important. Without the AWS account, you won't be able to work with AWS. Now, once you're done working with AWS, it's also important to understand about the global infrastructure that AWS provides. So we have something known as the regions and availability zones, which are very important to understand from the concepts perspective. So we'll talk a bit about the global infrastructure, uh, the overall presence of AWS all around the world. Once again, before we start off with this session, please don't forget to hit the subscribe button. So let's get started with this. Now, as of this recording, uh, the presence of AWS around the world below is what we have. So we have 31 AWS regions. Now, what are regions? Regions are nothing but these are your geographical locations, the physical locations where AWS data centers are available. All right. So you have 31 regions, 31 geographical locations where AWS has maintained their uh, data centers. And again, within these regions, we have your uh, sub regions. We call them as your availability zones which are isolated from each other. So as of today, as of this recording, we have 31 regions uh, that is maintained by AWS. And within these regions, you have 99 availability zones. So you can think of your regions as your collections of data centers. And each of these data centers will be running in its own availability zones. All right. So this is to make the data center disaster recovery, uh, to make it highly available. So even if one availability zone goes down, we still have the other availability zone where we can access the resources. And then we have 450 plus points of presence. So we have 400, 400 plus edge locations and 13 regional edge caches. So this is basically the presence of AWS all around the world. So the main thing here to look is your region. So we have 31 regions and within these regions, we have 99 availability zones. So the AWS cloud, it spans 99 availability zones and uh, uh, these 99 availability zones, they are under 31 regions. So we have regions and within the regions, we have your availability zones and all of these regions, they are you know all around the world and uh, AWS has also planned for 15 more availability zones and five new regions, which will be in Canada, Israel, Malaysia, New Zealand and your Thailand. So there are different different regions um, in the next session when we talk about your AWS console walkthrough I will show you the regions that are available, but all these regions are scattered all around the world So this is the presence that we have for AWS. So all these uh, blue dots that you see these are your existing regions that are available and The red ones that you see these are your upcoming regions or the planned region. So the regions they are available all over the world so we have regions in the us locations we have regions in the europe we have it in the australia we have it in india likewise we have regions all across the world and again these regions are nothing but these are your uh, data centers collections of data centers where the physical resources are available for us so the aws cloud infrastructure is the most secure extensive and reliable cloud platform that we have and this aws cloud infrastructure it offers 200 plus fully featured services from data centers which are available globally so whenever you want to deploy your application workloads across the globe in a single click or you want to build and deploy specific applications closer to your end users uh, who need single digit millisecond latency AWS provides you the cloud infrastructure where and when you need it. So because AWS is available all over the world, you can choose which location you want to use to deploy your application, to build your application so that it is closer to your end users. And with millions of active customers and tens of thousands of partners globally, AWS has the largest and most dynamic ecosystem. So customers across virtually every industry and of every size, including your startups, your enterprises and public sector organizations are running every imaginable use cases on the AWS platform. So simply because of this global infrastructure that is available as a customer, I have the flexibility, I have the freedom to choose in which region I want to deploy my applications. Um, uh, where my customers are, um, uh, the target users are available, 
I can choose that region to deploy my applications and make it available for my end users with low latency. So this is basically the AWS global infrastructure that we have. Again, uh, in the next session, we'll talk a bit more on your regions, the different different regions that are available. But pretty much that's all for this session. Thank you. Once again, before you leave, please don't forget to subscribe to the channel. And if you like the video, leave a like and please share the video.